My name is Henry Horowitz. I'm chairman of uh, South Carolina Arts Commission Board of Directors. I want to welcome everyone and thank you very much for coming. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us uh, as we honor these individuals and organizations that help make our state a vibrant and creative place to be. I also want to introduce Governor Henry McMaster and before uh, I let you speak, I just want to tell you that how much we appreciate your support of South Carolina Arts Commission on behalf of the Board of Commissions and the staff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Henry Howard. It's just a pleasure to be here. This, thank you. I see the, the Speaker of the House and the President Pro Tem of the Senate back here. This is an unusual meeting because everybody's smiling. <laughs> It's a great it's a great day and this is a beautiful building and I'd invite all of you to take a good look at this building because it's a reflection of the people of this state and it's absolutely magnificent I've never seen another one as, as beautiful as this both in its, uh, its architecture and the quality of the materials it's really a, a great reflection on South Carolina and by the way so is the governor's mansion for those of you who've never been there let us know you need to take a look it is gorgeous and it's those kind of things that reflect so well on our great state, and but nothing reflects better than, than the, the arts. The, the arts are different. They teach us about ourselves, and you cannot be a whole person unless you understand and, and appreciate the art. So it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be invited to this uh, ceremony today, and I look forward to congratulating these outstanding people who are being recognized, and there are a lot of others coming along. There's another generation coming along it will be recognized and well. So this is a very happy, healthy day from, for South Carolina, and I'm uh, tickled to death to be here. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ken May, Executive Director of the South Carolina Arts Commission. And I'm pleased to welcome you here today for this exciting award ceremony. We begin with the Elizabeth O'Neill Verner Governor's Awards for the Arts. Since 1972, the Verner Awards have honored the important roles that individuals, organizations, businesses, and public agencies play in bringing the arts to life for our citizens. Today, we present these awards to recognize innovation, quality, leadership, and steadfast support in the Palmetto State's arts community. Please come forward to accept your award when I call your name. Our first honoree, is the South Carolina Legislature. On June 7, 1967, Governor Robert E. McNair signed legislation creating the South Carolina Arts Commission, beginning a new era of public support for the arts in South Carolina. For 50 years, the Arts Commission has worked to realize the state's commitment to create a thriving arts environment that benefits all citizens. The Arts Commission's longevity is due in part to years of bipartisan support in the General Assembly. This special Verner Award acknowledges the legacy of generations of elected leaders whose consistent investment, even during the most challenging times, has nurtured the creative vitality of our state and advanced access to the arts for all South Carolinians. Accepting the award on behalf of the South Carolina Legislature are President Pro Tempore of the Senate, Hugh Leatherman, and Speaker of the House, Jay Lucas. Please join me in congratulating and thanking Senator Leatherman and Representative Lucas. Laura Spong began painting in the 1950s, overcoming barriers commonly facing women artists through persistence and commitment to her work. She focused on developing her talents, always aiming to create good art rather than quick notoriety. After decades of quiet dedication, Spong is now recognized as one of South Carolina's most prominent painters. Many artists draw inspiration from her success, her productivity, and her vision of excellence. 
Spong has had an exemplary career, not only because of public acclaim for her work, but because of her tenacity in living a life that conveys her belief in art and its importance to society and to personal growth. Please join me in congratulating Laura Spong. Dr. Leo Twiggs is an artist, educator, and advocate. His story, Overcoming the Barriers of Poverty and Racial Bias to Attain Educational and Professional Success, is once representative and exceptional. Twiggs' work makes a statement and reveals an artist who is sensitive to both history and present day realities. In culmination of his 50 plus year career, his recent project, Requiem for Mother Emmanuel, bookends the accomplishments that earned him distinction as the first visual artist to receive the Elizabeth O'Neill Werner Award in 1981. Twig's myriad of contributions to the educational and cultural vitality of the state have been both consequential and constructive. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Leo Twiggs. And, Doctor, don't, don't go yet. There's, there's one more award for this gentleman. The Order of the Palmetto of South Carolina's highest recognition. recognition. This man has a lot of admirers, and I'm one of them. And uh, Doctor, this is uh, it's a, a pleasure for me on behalf of the people of the state, and I'll read it. It says, State of South Carolina, in grateful recognition of contributions and friendship to the state of South Carolina and her people, I do hereby confer upon Leo Franklin Twiggs the order of the Palmetto with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, signed by the governor, Henry McMaster, on this day. God love you. Yes, and Leo, gotcha. Quentin Baxter of Charleston has developed a stellar reputation as a jazz percussionist, arranger, composer, and producer. Through his associations with other prominent musicians, he has brought South Carolina's vibrant jazz tradition to people all around the world. In addition to being a leading performer, Baxter is an alumnus and adjunct faculty member at the College of Charleston School of the Arts. He is a gifted teacher who helps his students grow as artists, performers, and future professional musicians. The commitment to greater community is a testament to Baxter's belief that music is something to be nourished, documented, and shared. Please join me in congratulating Quentin Baxter.
Betsy Teeter of Spartanburg has led the formation of Hub City Writers Project, Hub City Press, the Hub City Bookshop, and Hubbub, all institutions that strengthen Spartanburg's literary and cultural identity. Writers from across the country submit their work to Hub City Press, not just because of its award-winning reputation, but also because of Teeter's dedication to authors. Beyond her contributions to literary arts, Teeter has spearheaded the installation of public art throughout her city and was the driving force behind the Spartanburg Music Trail. She is a visionary leader and a passionate cultivator of South Carolina's readers and writers and of the arts as a whole. Please join me in congratulating Betsy Teeter. Brenda McCutcheon of Columbia is a dance education pioneer. She created and implemented the curriculum for South Carolina's first Bachelor of Arts degree in dance education at Columbia College, and followed that by creating USC's first dance education curriculum. Her comprehensive textbook, Teaching Dance as Art in Education, is considered the foundation text for K-12 teachers certification in the US and abroad. She helped establish the South Carolina Center for Dance Education and has been a leader in the National Dance Education Organization. McCutcheon has devoted her career to redefining dance education and training teaching artists. Please join me in congratulating Brenda McCutcheon. The significant philanthropic commitment of the Stringer and Rainey Foundations dates back to 1947, when the Stringer Foundation was created by William Kenneth Stringer and Nancy Freeman Stringer, parents of Caroline Stringer Rainey. In 1993, the Callie and John Rainey Foundation was established, and together, these family-related foundations have contributed generously to ensure the vitality of the arts across South Carolina. In addition, each family member has taken on leadership roles with supported organizations, thereby guiding expanded accessibility to arts and culture. The Stringer and Rainey Foundation's investments in a long list of institutions and artists have safeguarded the state's cultural history and creative environment. Accepting the award today is Trustee Mary Rainey Belser. and Robert Green. The City of Beaufort and USC Beaufort Center for the Arts partner to provide arts opportunities for residents and visitors in their city. City leaders believe that such opportunities are fundamental to a healthy and growing community. The USC Beaufort Center for the Arts has been the heart of the City of Beaufort's rich and diverse arts culture for 30 years, serving as both the sponsor and venue for all forms of arts. This collaboration between city government and a significant local institution has been a catalyst to make Beaufort a robust arts and cultural center. Accepting the award are Billy Kaiserling, mayor of Beaufort, and Bonnie Hargrove, director of USC Beaufort Center for the Arts. <laughs> 
Since its founding in 1973, South Carolina Humanities has supported arts and culture in South Carolina, recognizing the value and the creative arts and their connection to the humanities. Partnering with a range of organizations, South Carolina Humanities supports many exhibitions and programs that specifically highlight art and art history or that include an artistic component. South Carolina Humanities works statewide to support the discussion, interaction, and interpretation that artistic works inspire, allowing participants to come to a deeper understanding of the art form, its history, and its cultural importance. Accepting the award is Executive Director Dr. Randy Akers. Next, we move to the Jean Laney Harris Folk Heritage Awards, our state's highest award for the traditional arts. Traditional arts are forms of creativity that are rooted in a people's culture and history and pass from one generation of artists to the next. We honor these South Carolinians today for their dedication to the presentation and preservation of artistic and cultural traditions that have a long-standing presence in our state. Narrative quilt maker Peggy Hart well of Somerville, traces her inspiration to her grandfather's colorful and haunting stories. Her creative evolution was also nurtured by the quilts made by women in her family using scraps of fabric left over from sewing work or bits and pieces salvaged from clothes no longer wearable. Hartwell's quilts, inspired by diverse sources, are a means of engaging with her community. Her fabric artwork is in the collections of major museums across the U.S and has been exhibited throughout the country. Please join me in congratulating Peggy Hartwell. The Sweetgrass Cultural Arts Festival Association of Mount Pleasant educates the public about Gullah Geechee culture, traditions, and sweetgrass basketry. Begun in 2005, the annual Sweetgrass Festival provides basket makers the opportunity to market their work. And a basket making summer camp offers children a chance to learn sweetgrass basketry. The association also works to address the impact of residential and commercial development on sweetgrass harvesting. The association's multi-pronged approach ensures that the sweetgrass basketry tradition will continue as a cultural, economic, and educational resource for generations to come. Representing the Sweetgrass Cultural Arts Festival Association are Thomas Cena Stokes Marshall, Diane Loritzen, and Joanne Brown. Congratulations. Traditional music is a way of life for Dan and Norma Hendricks of Pickens, connecting them to their roots, their community, and to generations of musicians they have mentored. The Hendricks have been instrumental in the creation of such programs as Young Appalachian Musicians, or YAMS, an after-school music program for third to eighth graders, and the Sweet Potato Pie Kids, YAMS performance group. Many of their protégés have gone on to form their own bands, record CDs, attend college as music majors, and become instructors themselves. Dan and Norma Hendricks have brought bluegrass and traditional music to the forefront of their mountain community through their enthusiastic participation and advocacy. Please join me in congratulating Dan and Norma Hendricks. Before I turn it back over to Governor Master, I just want to ask all the awardees to remain in the hall for a group photo after the ceremony. So thank you so much and congratulations once again.
Y'all, thank you all for being here. These, these are really wonderful moments as we think of the talent that we have in South Carolina, and we really must do all that we can to encourage and recognize this talent and remember the other generations coming after us that need to do the same thing to inspire our people and keep our state strong. So thank you very much for being here as we marvel at the talent of these wonderful people. Thank you very much. Before everyone leaves, I want to recognize Bob Farrell as a commissioner of the, of the South Carolina Arts Commission. Bob? Fellow South Carolinians, at today's, may I have your attention please? May I have your attention please? I used to work in this place so I know how to get attention. You have to ask for it, you don't get it normally. At the luncheon that we will uh, be joining in a few minutes, there will be a special award from the South Carolina Foundation, Arts Foundation, which is a sister organization that supports the Arts Commission, in which I happen to be privileged to serve as a senior member of the commission. That recipient will receive a very special award, and I will not preclude the commission, the, the foundation's opportunity. But I will tell you now, and I will welcome up to the podium, not for a speech, just for the recognition while we're all together here, a man who began his public service in 1969 in this very building. He served for three wonderful, blossoming years before he went to back to Charleston and was elected mayor in 1975. I was chief of staff to the Speaker of the House at that time and assembled the Charleston delegation over a spaghetti dinner in his departing year. And we said, Joe, when you go back home, you can't practice law, you've got to serve the city, which was divided then. He said, but I don't know anything about being mayor. I said, Joe, there, there, are, there are schools for that. Don't worry about that. You, you're going to be, a, you're a great learner. You're Citadel Education, you're six years in the General Assembly. You'll be fine. For 40 years, this man led Charleston to its renaissance. It became the model city, the model city for American historic reservation and preservation, restoration and preservation. He became the leader of the National League of Cities and the National Council of Mayors. He married, made a very, very heroic and very close race for governor of South Carolina. I present to you America's Mayor, Joseph P. Riley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. He will not speak at this moment. Otherwise, we'd all be late for everything else the rest of the day. Thank you.